Journey to Atlantis was the first coaster installment into SeaWorld San Diego. This mock water coaster has a very interesting layout and contains some nice coaster elements. In today's video, we will be diving into the deep dark depths of Atlantis and review this beloved water coaster. Before we start, I would like to apologize for posting two SeaWorld San Diego coaster reviews in one week. Me and Flashwing are heading off to Disney on Saturday and overall had a very busy week, so we need a nice and quick video and this provided that. So with that said, expect a lot of Disney content in the near future. Hopefully it's not too much to shoot you away. Anyways, the first thing you'll see when you walk up to the ride is this massive building that the coaster section runs through and the pond out front that some of the boat section sits in. This is nothing really special, I even think it's a bit ugly. I really dislike the colors of the building, especially that weird blue and yellow color scheme in the queue line. Besides that, it has a decently good plaza with a nice section of path that gets splashed by ongoing boats. Once you get into the queue, this really annoying girl reads off this storyline. I usually block it out so I cannot really tell you how it goes. It is something along the lines of exploring the city of Atlantis with her and a doctor or something. I honestly have no idea, please don't quote me on that. Anyways, the storyline is not that pronounced throughout the entirety of the ride like the Orlando version, so it does not matter much anyways. Once you're in the queue and past beginning switchbacks, the queue line is decently themed. There is a nice hallway that's pretty dark and has a rock type style wall, and this then dumps you into an atrium which leads to the ride platform. The ride platform is nothing really special, so I want to take more time to talk about the ride vehicles. The boats are pretty comfortable, you have individual lap bars for each seat, they don't tighten down like other mock lap bars, and the ride operators generally don't staple you, it's not like you're getting airtime or anything so there's no reason to be pinned down. The front row and the back row get really wet on this ride, however the second and third row just get a few drops on them for the most part. Once you're dispatched from the station, you go through some mist, when it's working of course. I'd like to point out that this coaster has a lot of extra elements that tend to not work, and this is one of them, so yeah. You then go up a chain lift, it's nothing really special, you have the parking lot to your left and the first drop to your right. It's not really a great view, but <laughs> there is something to look at. Getting sidetracked again, this coaster recently got retracked, and it is very smooth for the most part. There are some rough patches that didn't get retracked, and you could tell if you pay close attention. I am very prone to roughness, and being the entitled doozy I am, I will tell you exactly where it's rough and where it's glass smooth. After proceeding up the chain lift, you have a quick turnaround. From what I understand, and again, don't quote cool me on this, this section of track did not get retracked, so it's on the rougher side. However, you go through the section at like 7 miles per hour, so you don't feel it at all. I just had to point it out, okay? Again, I am an entitled doozy that's prone to roughness. Following the turnaround, you lead into the first drop. There is a bowl of water right above the track that dumps water out and pulls away when the boat goes under it. At least that's what it's supposed to do. There are a couple times when the bowl didn't stop itself and it peed all over me and got me wet. Anyways, the first drop isn't anything special. You may hit some slight airtime. Like, gravity is 3Gs, and this drop is probably like 2.6. Now, that was another estimate, so don't quote me on that. But it's basically forceless, and it's a lot of fun because you have the splash end at the bottom. After the first drop, you have a turnaround that's part of a boat segment. You go around this cool looking structure that also shows the right entrance sign. It's not very apparent, but it would be the first thing you see when you enter the plaza. One thing to note is there are a bunch of water cannons here. You could pay like 25 cents and blow up these water bombs from the walkways. A few times I have been splashed by some GP ass thinking it was funny, and I'm still salty about that by the way. Following the turnaround, you go into what I think is the coolest part of the ride. There's an indoor elevator lift. Before entering this, more of the storyline plays. It's kind of hard to understand what is happening, and it's not that apparent. Again, I hardly pay attention to this anyways. All what I know is there is some goofy off person who chants with music. When going up the actual lift, the boat rocks side to side and we're like swings, and it's another really cool feature of this ride. You then crest the top of the ride out of the elevator lift and get a great view of the parking lot. I love looking for my car when I am up here. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting too distracted. This is where you hit the first coaster segment of the ride. The boat drops into a left bank turn that gives some decent positive Gs in the valley. You then pull up into a brake run and drop again into kind of like an S bend into the second splashdown. This is a pretty good coaster segment for a water coaster, and it is glass smooth after the retrack. The splashdown of course gets you wet, especially in the first row where the water comes over the front of the boat. Before I wrap things up, I would like to talk about operations. This water coaster can load three boats at once, and I've only seen them do that once. Maybe it's because I go on off days or on cold days, but the one time where I saw them running three boats was when Emperor was open. Normally they run one boat loading station, even on weekends. I guess it really depends on the weather, especially because it's cloudy a lot in Mission Bay, but I see this line at a 30 to 45 minute wait when it easily should be 10 to 15 minutes, which makes me mad, but again, I am an entitled dude. Overall, I have to say this is a pretty good water coaster with some decent coaster segments. The splash runs are pretty fun and all the unique effects are a cool add-on. The best part is by far the elevator lift that tilts back and forth, I thoroughly enjoy this element every time. After the retract, this coaster is glass smooth and it's fun for the whole family. 
I do ride this coaster every single time I visit Seaworld San Diego, no matter the weather, just because the lineup at this park is so shallow. It's a lot of fun every time, and I really enjoy it. Despite all these positives, this is a water coaster, and it's not had that top of the line thrill that you would get. It's definitely directed more towards families. I would like it if it was well themed and had a good storyline, but this is SeaWorld, and even with a half decent attempt at it, I don't enjoy the storyline at all. For these reasons, I am giving a journey to Atlantis a final score of 6. Anyways, that's all for this video. If you made it this far, I can't thank you enough. I really, really do appreciate it. And always make sure to like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.